Cashflow Diary Podcast, Episode 100. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leverage streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game, Jay Massey. All right, and welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. I am your host, Jay Massey, and I am glad that you are here. See, with today's technology, we can reach out all across the globe and find great people for all of us to meet and become bigger, better, better entrepreneurs. And today's guest is, well, on the other side of the globe, and that's what I'm excited about. I, I recently met him uh, when I was hanging out with uh, Simon Black uh, over at his uh, Entrepreneurship and Liberty Camp, and I, he's just one of those individuals that I know you're going to get a lot from and that you absolutely must know if that is, if you desire to really build massive cash flow and not only just cash flow, but cash flow online as well. I mean, there was just, he was a wealth of information and it was definitely exciting to talk about. So before we get there, for those of you joining us for the first time, make sure you go over to learninvestingnow.com. Why? Because I told you to. No, seriously, go over there because I have created for you some of the basics that you need to know to get started in investing. Sometimes you wonder how on earth is this investing stuff done, especially with no money, no credit. Learn to invest for less, okay? And that's exactly what we're going to do. Absolutely no cost to you. And one of the most important skill sets of an investor is learning to do due diligence. And I've actually put up there my due diligence worksheet so that you make sure that you have everything you need when it comes down to closing your deals properly. So looking forward uh, to helping you guys in that way. Now, today's guest, I mean, man, when you talk about having a story that is absolutely awesome, willing to take nothing other than a yes answer, I love this guy simply because he's got high energy and he's definitely someone that I have already learned a lot from. You ever learn something or meet someone and just go, okay, within three minutes of talking, you've exploded my mind and I don't even know how else I'm going to be able to remember enough stuff that you've said so that I can go implement it. That's who we have today. If you're wondering who it is, it's simply Mark Anastasi, the laptop millionaire. Mark, how are you? Hey, Jay, I'm fine. How are you? Um, I'm good. Just for the sake of everyone, where are you today? I'm coming to you right now from uh, Athens in Greece. Love it. Never been there. Looking forward to it. Got to get there sometime. So for those who may not know, share with us, if you will, um, what I call your origin story. Because many entrepreneurs, or when I see an entrepreneur, I think of them as superheroes, right? You know, yesterday's superheroes, today's entrepreneurs, they're the same person. But every superhero has a beginning. I want to know, I want everyone to know your beginning. Right. Well, uh, one day I went to this laboratory and I got bitten by this uh, <laughs> <laughs> nuclear uh, infected uh, spider. And uh, nice. I guess that's how it got started. But no, my superhero story started a bit different than that. So I grew up in Greece. And uh, and when I was 18, I left because there was no jobs. And I, I, I moved to England to, you know, to get a uh, try and find a job to get a better life, etc. And uh, it didn't quite work out that way. I couldn't really find a job. Uh, the kind of job that I wanted. So I ended up working as a security guard for two years. So between 2000 and 2002, for two full years, I was working as a security guard from seven o'clock in the evening till seven o'clock the next morning, like doing night shifts, uh, in, um, in Banbury, Oxfordshire to the north of London. And, uh, I did that for, for two whole years earning minimum wage. Mm. And during that time, because I wasn't earning enough money to, uh, to, to pay for my living expenses, I ended up in seven thousand pounds in debt, which is about twelve thousand dollars in debt in uh, today's money. So, um, so at that point, I started doing some telesales to try to earn commissions 
to pay off my debts that really didn't work out. I worked there for 14 months and uh, I was uh, I was getting into debt even faster. I only made one sale in 14 months of doing that job in telesales. And so by the time I was about 22 years old, uh, I found myself with that, you know, $12,000 in debt, eight credit cards, and, uh, and I, I got, and lost my job. They fired me from that telesales job, you know, just one sale in 14 <laughs> months. No surprise there. Uh, so I didn't pay the rent for two, three months and uh, I was so depressed. I just stayed in bed all day. I couldn't go out and, and get a job. And when, even when I tried, there was no job available in, uh, that I could find anyway. My, my self esteem was completely wiped out. Uh, I couldn't go back to Greece because my parents were in an even more difficult situation than I was. Wow. And my father was going bankrupt. My mom was getting kicked out of her apartment. They were divorced anyway. Uh, my sisters were getting kicked out of the school. And, and I, I couldn't bring myself to go back with my tail between my legs and say, hey, I completely failed. You know, the money you spent to send me uh, off to the UK? Well, mm. that's gone. Plus, hey, I've got a surprise. We owe $12,000, right? And so uh, I ended up, um, they got, I got kicked out of that apartment. I stayed at a friend's place for a couple of nights, another friend's place for a few more nights, uh, a third friend's place for a few more nights. But by the end of the three weeks, I just, I, I couldn't bring myself to impose on them like that. They didn't have money either. And so I ended up uh, taking shelter in an abandoned building in London. And we were about 20 homeless people living in that abandoned building. We were basically squatters. We were squatting in this building. We had yep. no right to be there, but we were just right. uh, taking over this building, essentially. And I ended up living there for the next five months. So that's that's the start of the origin story. And uh, one day I remember very clearly, I was, uh, and I was surviving thanks to these credit cards, by the way. It was weird. In the early 2000s in the UK, they were sending credit cards to anything with a pulse. <laughs> if they, by accident they had your dog's name on a register somewhere, like you register online for something, whether you were dog's name just for fun, you would get a credit card sent in the mail in your dog's name. It was wow. that insane. At the time, they were trying to get everybody into debt, mortgages, home improvement loans, car loans, uh, you, you name it. And um, so I was sort of, I was homeless with eight credit cards. Wow. And uh, one day I remember I, 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 I just couldn't take it anymore because I had all this negative self-talk uh, every day. But my, my brain was, was saying, kill yourself. You're pathetic. You're such a loser. Mm. You're lame. Mm. You're ugly. You're, you're terrible. How could you let this happen? Your friends have jobs and and, and they were in consulting and they're in investment banking. What, what, what did you do with your life? You were a security mm. guard. You did telesales. You went broke. You're homeless now. Well done. Kill yourself. So I had this constantly, 18 hours a day in my mind. Replay. I couldn't sleep at night even with that constant thing on, on my mind. And one day I just couldn't take it anymore. I just started running through the streets of London. Mm. And uh, I remember very clear. It's pouring down with rain and I'm crying my eyes out and I'm drenched with rain. I'm, I'm cold. My lungs are burning because the air is so cold and I'm running. And I end up running into this cemetery, this cemetery called Old Brompton Road Cemetery. Very old, very old cemetery. And, uh, and I just wanted to be away from people. And I run to the end of that cemetery and there's nobody there. And I collapse amongst these tombstones. And, uh, and I'm thinking to myself, that's it. I'm going to kill myself. I can't, I can't go on like this anymore. And I even had this thought, how, how practical am I? I could die, kill myself here in the cemetery. It would just be, it would be less trouble for people. It would just push me <laughs> to this hole in the right. ground right you're, there. You're already there. So, hey, <laughs> convenient. Exactly, exactly. Exactly. What a, what a well-meaning young man. What a thoughtful young yeah, man. <laughs> exactly. How nice of him. You're right. And, and at one point though, I look up and I, and I notice this tombstone and said, you know, Matthew something, 1622, 1644. This kid died at 22 years old, you know, about the age I was at the time. And it said something like, you know, he was a baker or I don't know, candlestick maker, whatever. Uh, <laughs> three kids, you know, something, something. That's it. And I thought to myself, what would it say on my tombstone? And, and I, and I got angry in that mm. moment because it couldn't say it. What, what did it say? Mark and Stasi, former security guard, dead. The end, you know? Mm. That was it. I hadn't done anything with my life. And I got angry and I decided, I got up and I, and I dusted myself off and I, saw, I said, no, this is not going to be the end. This is just the beginning. I'm going to use this freaking situation. I'm going to 
figure out a way to turn the situation around financially, and then I'm going to devote my life to sharing with other people how they can do the same thing. So in that moment, I was, I was like, you know, geeing myself up. I was, uh, I was, I was trying to find meaning out of the situation. I was trying mm-hmm. to find a purpose, something bigger mm-hmm. to do this, see, to, to, to get that inspiration, to get myself going. And I started delivering a seminar to these tombstones. I said, you know, something I read in a personal development book, which was, uh, uh, problems are not problems. They're just challenges. Just as you go to the gym and you push against tremendous resistance to build up your muscle, challenges in life are the gym on which you sculpt your soul, on which you sculpt your personality, your character. This is, this is here. This situation is here for me to grow and become bigger and better and, and better, as you, as you said at the beginning of this, <laughs> of this podcast. And, uh, and I just made a commitment. No matter what it takes, I'm going to turn this situation around. And Jay, I walked back to that abandoned building, the freer I'd ever felt. And I w- had total, absolute certainty that things were going to change. I felt calm. For the first time in months, even years, I felt calm. Because even though nothing had changed in my outside circumstances, within myself, I had made a decision. And when you make a powerful decision like this, no matter what your situation like, you're getting divorced, you're, you've lost somebody, you've, uh, uh, you, you've lost your house, etc. If you just make a powerful decision that no matter what happens, I'm not going to give up until I get my outcome. This is my outcome, one. And two, I'll do whatever it takes to get to this outcome then it, it, nothing else really matters and everything is kind of uh, kind of falls into place it's uh, it's like uh, when you show the universe that you'll stop at nothing to get your outcome the universe just gives you your outcome because a week later i attended i attended a personal development seminar which was just about 1 kilometer away so i could just walk to that uh, seminar and it was 300 pounds to attend about 500 dollars to attend which was a huge amount of money for me it was basically the equivalent of basically food for a couple of months. I said, you know what? Screw it. If they're saying that they can uh, uh, change your mind and change your life and teach you about goal setting, etc., I've got nothing left to lose. And everybody was everybody was saying to me, Mark, forget about it. Don't go. They're, they're just after your money. It's a scam, etc. It won't work. Who do you think you are, etc.? I was like, you know what? Screw this. I've got nothing left to lose. I'm going to be there. You know what? I was there at like 6 a.m., 7, 7 a.m. in the morning. I was there to 10 o'clock at night, networking, asking questions, writing notes, taking notes on every single ounce of information. And, um, and I went, I, I left that seminar. I, I went back to the place. And for the next three days, I, I did the mental exercises that they talked about. I identified that I had 44 limiting beliefs about money. Negative stuff circling in my head, things from uh, my father who was always broke. Uh, he was a journalist and he was always broke, never good with money. He would say things like, the only way to get the rich is to bribe the Greek government. <laughs> or he would say things like, uh, rich people are evil, greedy, exploitative people. We are good people. That is why we have no money. <laughs> in, in other words, the subtext to that is that uh, if you want to be loved by people, make sure you have no money. Right. right. Then, then people will sympathize and love you, etc. And if you have money, people will, will want you dead. They'll, they'll want your BMWs to explode in the streets and 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 things like that. And my mother's belief was it was this: if you she's French, my mom's belief is uh, if you have the money, you must spend the money straight away because if you do not spend the money, uh, someone will take the money from you. Okay. <laughs> so, and, and this was just three out of these forty-four limiting beliefs, right? And I, I worked, I used neuro-linguistic programming techniques that I learned to eliminate each and every one of those uh, beliefs. I wrote down my goals. I wrote down 20 things I love about myself. I wrote down 20 things that I'm grateful for. I wrote down what I call my who I am exercise. Things like, I am amazing. I am inspiration. I am power. I am a genius and I apply my wisdom. I'm a God-guided expression of health, wealth, happiness, and joy for myself and all the lives that I have the privilege of touching. Every day and every way, I'm healthy and strong. You get the idea, right? None of that was, 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 um, arguably true at the time, but that was who I was becoming, who I was committed to becoming. And that's, I'd like to think is who I, I became eventually by programming my mind. And that's the point I'm making. I, I eliminated them, identified and eliminated limiting beliefs, and I started programming myself for the beliefs of the kind of person that I wanted to become. But anyway, that, those were the initial exercises I did in the first three days. I wrote down a hundred reasons why I must make two thousand pounds a month or three thousand dollars a month, basically. 
I, I brainstormed a hundred ways how I could make $3,000 a month. And I remembered something that the guy sitting next to me at the seminar told me. He said he was selling ebooks on the internet. Mm-hmm. And I had his number and I called him up. I said, Francis, listen, I didn't tell you this at the seminar, but here's my situation. I'm broke. I'm $12,000 in debt. I'm homeless. And, uh, and, uh, I want to ask you for a favor. And he said, Oh, what? You want money? You want a job? You know, he was, he, he thought, I was looking to get something from him in that sense. I said, no. I read from Robert Kiyosaki's book. He says, work to learn, don't work to earn. I'll work for you for free, Francis, if you just share with me how you make money online. And he kind of laughed at that. Nobody had ever asked him that kind of uh, question to be mentored by him. And he said, Mark, you don't have to work for me for free. It's very simple. It's four steps. Step one, find the target market and find out what they want to buy. Step two, create that product or that ebook with that solution that they, they're looking for. Step three, set up the website that explains what's in that ebook. And step four, drive traffic to the website that sells that product to that target market. Fine. So he basically gave me that outline. I said, how do you drive traffic? I said, he said, Google AdWords. Go into Google AdWords, set up an account. It's free to set up an account. And then you just pay every time somebody clicks to get to your website. It took me the next 28 days. And Jay, I was working, I would basically go to one of the four or five local um, internet cafes that were there. I was staying mm-hmm. in Earl's Court, where there was lots of hostels for like backpackers, young people, etc. lots of uh, internet cafes. I would go with my floppy disk. I would <laughs> put my floppy disk into their computer. I would research online, write a Word document with information I found to write my first ebook and information about traffic generation, how to set up a website, etc. Save it to my floppy disk, go back to that abandoned building, sleep a few hours, I was working 16 hours, 17 hours a day, 18 hours, 19 hours, 20 hours a day. I did this for 28 days. And by the end of 28 days, I had a very crude web page up, which had a sales letter that I basically copied from somewhere else. And I changed the words, basically. Uh, it was on there. Uh, ClickBank was the payment processor. I signed up with ClickBank for $49, got my payment link so that the payments would go through ClickBank. And then every two weeks, they would send me checks. And, uh, and I started driving traffic with Google AdWords. With the first day, I made zero sales. But mm-hmm. the second day that my site was online, I made my first sale of an ebook at $67. Oh, oh. And yes. I got the notification via Hotmail. I'm like, what the hell is this? What, what, what is this <laughs> notification? <laughs> anyway, the next day, I go back to the Internet Cafe. I'd made two sales that night. Because while I was sleeping in the UK, it was daytime in the US, and people were basically clicking on the ads right. and uh, getting onto my page. And I was getting about 200 to 300 visitors a day. And um, so how it worked was that by the end of the week, I was making about five sales a day at $67. So every day I was making about $330 in sales and I was spending in traffic, let's say 300 clicks at, um, what was that? Let's say 10 cents. It was very cheap. Wow. It was about $30 a day in buying the traffic and $330 a day or thereabouts in income. Some days it was $500, $600. Nice. Uh, in fact, very quickly, I launched another 28 ebooks. Uh, by 2006, <laughs> I was making $460,000 a year in passive income from these ebooks. And, uh, but, but the cool thing is that within 28 days, or about, let's say, a month and, and a bit, a month and one more week, I went from zero to having a $10,000 a month passive income stream. Talk about cash flow. Thanks to something I learned from the guy sitting next to me at a seminar. And nice. people since then have kept asking me, Mark, how do I make money from ebooks? How do I make money from ebooks? How do I make money from ebooks? And I tell them, hold on, you're not listening to me. I said that I spent, I spent a whole, like almost a week working on my mindset, identifying my limiting beliefs, looking at negative things that my parents have said about money, eliminating those limiting beliefs, reprogramming my, my mind, doing a hundred reasons why, a hundred ways how. And, but people don't want to do those, that kind of work because it's dark. It's deep. It's, mm. it's, uh, you know, it's, it's negative. People don't like looking deep down in their subconscious mind to see what is preventing them from achieving success. They'd rather just look for the shiny object. Ooh, ebooks. Ooh, make money with Amazon. Ooh, make money from cash flow from properties. Ooh, make money from the <laughs> options trading online. That's exciting shiny object syndrome kind of situation that people uh, go through. They, they jump often from one to, to the next. 
Uh, but anyway, to, to answer your question, and I know it took a bit too long to answer this, but that is my origin story, if you will, my, my entrepreneur origin story. And although I kind of like the whole uh, bitten by a spider. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the bitten by a spider was already taken, unfortunately, but I hear where you're going. Um, and for the sake of those listening, uh, a floppy disk is something that we used to use because I'm sure there is a whole bunch of people who are like, what's a floppy disk? They, they have no idea what that was. Uh, sure. You can look it up. I'm sure Wikipedia, type it in in Google, floppy disk, two words. Uh, we don't have those anymore, so don't worry about it. Uh, but you don't need a floppy disk to do stuff online. It's Let crazy to think that it was only 10 years ago. It was just 10 years ago, 2004. Floppy disk. But yeah, yeah, it's gone. Floppy disk no longer matters. Um, let me ask you this, Mark. Do you think, because I know right now with everybody right now, they're thinking, okay, Google traffic, it's not 10 cents anymore. They're thinking, okay, there's, you know, that was 10 years ago. That's great. Just do you think that that opportunity or opportunities like that still exist for people today? I think actually today it's a hundred times better. Back then, 10 years ago, people weren't comfortable with typing in their credit card details online. There wasn't things like social media, like YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Plus, etc. You now have access to over 1.5 billion people online for free, thanks to social media. We didn't have any of those things. Right. And now you can buy solo ads. Now, you, now there's not just uh, pay-per-click advertising from Google, there's from literally tens of thousands of sites and services that offer pay-per-click traffic. So you can now get tons of traffic for free. And, uh, and so I think the opportunity is, uh, is there. It's even, it's even bigger. Now you have the Apple iTunes store, the iStore, whatever it's called, with over 200 million clients on there with their credit cards already registered. They just need to click on your product and they buy it. Uh, Amazon, same thing, 220 million customers with their credit cards lodged uh, or logged into Amazon. We yeah. have now clients that start with zero money, zero capital, and very quickly they get to 5000 10000 20, 30000 $40,000 a month in cash flow from selling other people's products. Are you tired of letting good cash flow generating ideas go to waste? Go to CashflowDiary.com forward slash ready to apply for a complimentary, yes, that means free, one-on-one -on -one breakthrough session. Take action now. Go to CashflowDiary.com forward slash ready. Again, that's CashflowDiary.com forward slash ready. Before we get back to today's episode of the Cashflow Diary podcast, your host Jay Massey has some important insights to share with you. Okay, so let me ask you this question. How do you like the new sound? Because we hit episode 100, and I'm sure you probably already figured that out. We're just excited, so we're changing a few things up. And as you noticed here, the music is a little different. Uh, hopefully you like it. You'll find it everywhere, everywhere we are. And uh, you also have more of me. What does that mean? I'm taking this time to officially announce, because some of you, may have noticed in the past that there were times where we would release an episode on a Thursday and sometimes not. And I was trying to gauge. We were gauging. Do they want it? Do they not? Does it make a difference? And it looks like to you, it makes a difference. Therefore, we're going to have it consistently. So now we're going to be Mondays and Thursdays, Mondays and Thursdays. Additionally, you're also going to get more episodes where it's just you and I. So I'm going to come up with more content and uh, deliver it to you where it's just you and I. A lot of the information that I'm just going through so that you have the ability to understand how to duplicate and create more cash flow, not only from our guests, but also from me. And what's really, really cool is that we're going to have a whole lot more fun as we continue to do so. So uh, if you've ever listened to some of the beginning ones, you heard about some giveaways and we had quotes and we had all of those things. So a number of those things are going to find their way right back into the show simply because I believe you like them too. So with that being said, did you hear how many ways that Mark is talking about creating cash flow? The whole point is for you to understand that 
cash flow can be created so many different ways. And there's more challenge in narrowing down the opportunity or the type of opportunity that you should actually take than there is wondering if there is opportunity. So let's get back to it. What I'm saying is that there is infinitely more opportunity today to start an internet business, to start generating some cash flow than there was 10 years ago, even eight years ago, or five years ago, even four years ago, three years ago. Um, I'll give you an example. One of the, uh, one of our students, he set up 10 blogs and each blog talks about one specific topic. So one blog is about eliminating the fear of flying. The other blog is about self-esteem. The third blog is about dating advice for men. The fourth blog is about Forex trading, right? He puts five or six or seven articles on each blog. And each blog is dedicated to promoting one specific ebook, one specific affiliate offer, basically, for each blog. So, okay, so it took him about 10 days to set up these 10 blogs. And then it took him another month to set up 10 videos on YouTube. He uploaded 10 videos on YouTube with specific keywords to each one of these target markets. 10 YouTube videos for each of those blogs. So he basically created a hundred short YouTube videos. We're talking about like one minute videos or two minute videos. And you don't see his face. It's just a PowerPoint slide, basically, uh, recorded with uh, with screen capture software like, like Camtasia. So he set up 100 YouTube videos, 10 at a time each, driving traffic to each one of 10 blogs. And he started making $1,000 a month in passive income, on average, per blog. So about $10,000 a month in passive income. And the blogs were free. The affiliate uh, signups were free. YouTube was free. Uploading 100 YouTube videos was free. And suddenly you have a cash flow of $10,000 a month. And this is just from the start of putting up 100 YouTube videos. So the point I'm making is that there isn't really any limits to how much cash flow you can generate with these strategies other than your imagination and your willingness to put in the work. I, I could rattle off hundreds of examples. Uh, I, I published a book a couple of years ago called The Laptop Millionaire. It became a New York Times bestseller, Wall Street Journal bestseller. And, uh, but the point, the uh, reason why I'm referencing the book is that in it, it includes 34 different strategies for generating cash flow and over 130 different case studies like the one I just described of people who came to our seminars, learned a few strategies, implemented some of these cash flow strategies and, uh, and started making money online. The, there real, there isn't really any lack of opportunity to, to make money. It's just, like you like to say, actually, I heard you say it at, uh, during your talk, uh, people don't have a lack of money or lack of cash flow. They, they, lack, they have a lack of ideas on how to generate the cash flow. Indeed. And now, and that, and that is where the true wealth lies. I mean, when you, you know, the interesting thing about your story is that when you said you collapsed in the graveyard, there, that is one of the richest places on the planet because so many ideas have died right there, unexercised, unrealized. And, and I, I just, there are just so many things about the, the ideas and the mindset. But you said something that I really want to make sure that people hear. Um, you know, and, and that we spend some time on, uh, because you said, no matter what it takes, I, I'm going to make something happen. But when you were saying that you didn't know the steps, you didn't know what you were going to do. Why didn't that stop you? Why did you not say, well, I don't know what I do. Why did you suddenly go, you know what, no matter what it takes, you didn't know what that commitment meant. How could you make it? Sure. And here's the thing. It doesn't matter that you don't know how. If you have a big enough reason why and you're committed to this, the, the, the ways how will make themselves manifest. You will see things, notice things, hear things. People will come to you. Opportunities will arise that you would have never noticed before and that you would have definitely never acted on before because you have that commitment and drive and determination to make it happen. And this is something that when if people haven't experienced this, I, I guess they just need to take it on faith uh, that what I'm saying is, is uh, true and, and factual. When you ha- make that commitment, the right opportunities come to you. Oh. In fact, one of my uh, affirmations that I use is that um, every day in every way, life brings me the right opportunities. And it does. Now, uh, and it's it's just amazing that I I, I think... Everything that you're experiencing, and 
correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm going to say that everything that you're experiencing today is a result of just a few simple decisions or, that have been repeated over and over again. Uh, and you just continue to deepen those beliefs and expand upon them. But they started at that that one pivotal moment, if you will, uh, it, back in the cemetery. And you you just simply looking at that tombstone and going, what would it say on your tombstone? So I, it is. I, I just love all of those things. Now, you you also highlighted something that I like to highlight, and I want to hear your thought processes on it. You said you were able to make a powerful decision. Describe for me, if you will, how to make a powerful decision. Sure. Well, most people, here's what I figured out, Jay. Most people go through life in two minds. They're of two minds. So, for example, it works something like this. And and I've seen this with over 16,000 people coming to my seminars over the years. It, It goes like this. Jay, I'm so excited to be here at your seminar. I want to make more money. Subconscious mind says, yeah, but if I make more money than my friend, my friends won't like me. And besides, I don't know how. And, uh, and it, it might be hard. And I don't you know hmm. things like that. Or my dad won't uh, accept me if I make more money than him. Wh- whatever. Right. So that intention that you say, I want to make more money has just been canceled out instantly, automatically. Or people might say, let's say you're a guy and you say, uh, Jay, I am ready to be in a beautiful relationship. I'm, uh, I want to be, I want to find that special goddess that, that will share her life with me. I'm, I'm ready for that beautiful relationship. And then you, your subconscious mind goes, yeah, but what if she breaks my heart? Right. Or, you know, or, or who am I kidding? I'll never find that person. Instantly you cancel that. Or you might say, I want to lose 20 pounds. And then you say, yeah, but I really like strawberry tarts or whatever. Right. Hey, strawberry so, is good, man. It is absolutely. I'm not. I'm not negating that. But what I'm saying is that is that people go through life cons- consistently canceling out their intentions, their their requests of the universe. Uh, their their uh, their their will is weak as well. They they basically say they want something, but subconsciously right. something entirely different might entirely different might be happening. So what is a powerful decision? Your question is, what is a powerful decision? Mm -hmm. A powerful decision is when you cut out any and every other possibility where you decide within yourself with a complete and absolute commitment that this is the only possible outcome that's going to happen. It's I'm going to be successful with this strategy. Because if you make that commitment and you go, go for it, 100%, 100%, completely and totally, you hit that first tumbling block, which is, I don't know how to do it. Great. Any, anybody else who would be in two minds would go like, oh, I don't know how to do it. They stop right there. But mm-hmm. not somebody that, is, that, makes, that has made a powerful decision. They will go, okay, first tumbling block. I don't know how to do it. You know what? Let me brainstorm some ways, some people that might know it, some names. Maybe they can recommend somebody. Let me figure out a way around that. Okay, then the next obstacle. I don't have investment capital. Okay. Well, let me go and ask people for investment capital. Let me find out how to get investment capital. Let me find out who do I need to become in order to attract investment capital. Let me find out how to write a business plan. Okay. Next thing. Okay. I've got the investment capital. Now I don't know where to find the right uh, business or right uh, property to invest in. Mm -hmm. You know what? That's okay. I'm going to go and find out. I'm going to figure out. I'm going to figure out any obstacle that comes up. It's not even an obstacle. It's just something else that you need to figure out. Oh, Most people yes. will never take that initial first step of, of even starting something, Jay. But then the, the majority of the people that do start something, they drop off at the first obstacle. It blows my mind how easy it is to become successful. <laughs> it's been 10 years now. It blows my mind how few people we need to compete with, really. Right. Because 95, 96% of people, they're, they're no competition they're because they, they drop off at the first hurdle. The, it, it's it's yeah. so much about that mindset, that determination. I, I call this the mindset of champ. I mean, many other people have called it the same thing, the, the, cha- the mindset of champions. I am so in admiration of professional football players, soccer players, rugby players, uh, basketball players, etc., the amount of will and determination and effort and work and, and discipline and waking up early in the morning and, and practice, 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 push, work out, push up more, etc., uh, self-sacrifice, etc., that has taken them 
to get to that level. Most people never see that and never even come close to to applying that level of mental focus and determination that that uh, professional athletes um, have or, or exercise. But but we can exercise that same exact amount of willpower and, and determination and and practice and and all these things in whatever our chosen profession or chosen field is, whether it's becoming a great at uh, cash flow generating with real estate or, or uh, in the stock market with uh, uh, businesses, with uh, uh, being a great violinist, with being great at managing your team at, at your job, whatever it is. But most people don't do that. Most people don't even use up 0.01% of their <laughs> potential. So you ask me for what is a powerful decision? That's what a powerful decision is, where you cut out every and any other possibility than that outcome that you're committed to. I, you know what? I I agree so much. I mean, there's just so much that you're saying that um, I, I have a hard time. Right now, I just, I, I'm just i getting all excited and ready to go You know, write some more offers, raise some more capital, do some more business, simply because it's just like the, 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 the mindset, the principles, the 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 state that you need to be in is the exact same regardless of the discipline or the uh, career endeavor or whatever it is that you're trying to do if you want to be a great and excellent parent this is the exact same stuff uh that must be done in order to make it happen and l- let me ask you this when it comes to the mindset piece um you know, because right now there's probably an, an individual or two that's probably thinking to themselves, okay, all right, I get what these guys are talking about. Uh, what, after you've got your mind correct and going in the in the correct direction, what do you think is the next most critical, important step? Well, I'll tell you what I did. I basically, I brainstormed lots of solutions. So I, I sorted out my mindset. Uh, identifying limiting beliefs, destroying them, reprogramming my mind with positive beliefs, etc., empowering beliefs about success and money and, and about myself. The next step was brainstorming. So I brainstormed lots of ideas. Most people, they're in a job or they're doing something, they have a shop or whatever, and then they have one other idea and they go for that other idea because it's the only option that they have. If you want to have a great idea, have many ideas. You know, in Fortune magazine, once I, I uh, read this article where talk, they talked about the mathematics of innovation or the new mathematics of innovation. Companies now brainstorm a hundred ideas, hundreds of ideas even, in order for them to come up with one great idea for a product or a business venture, et cetera, joint venture even. And so uh, the next step, once you've got your mindset sorted out, brainstorm lots of ideas. Come up with a hundred ways for you to make a million dollars. Brainstorm a hundred ways how you can make Ten thousand dollars a month, or twenty thousand dollars a month. Brainstorm, brainstorm twenty ways how you can come out of the difficult situation that you're in right now. You know, come up with brainstorm twenty ways how you can be happier. Uh, brainstorm twenty ways how you can meet that special person in your life. Uh, so exercise that that creative mind of yours. Use brainstorming exercises to come up with better ideas, and then. Once you've chosen out of the hundred ideas, you've chosen like your top three ideas, for example, then you choose your top one idea. At that point, what I tend to do is I write a, a short plan. I brainstorm some more ideas about all the different things that I would need to do or learn or people I would need to contact in order to achieve that outcome. So, for example, if your outcome is to uh, start a clothing business, for example, you, I would bring some things like, uh, okay, I need to find fabric, I need to find a design, I need to find distribution, I need to find somebody who's done this before me to become a mentor, I need to find a, a place uh, where I can uh, work, I need to find people who can sew this together, I need to find a, a uh, bring some some cool ideas about uh, uh, what type of clothing to to do. I need to uh, uh, contact different retail stores, find out what they want, whatever. I have no idea about the clothing business. I'm just saying, I'm just <laughs> hypothesizing here, right? That that be, this would be a series of things that I might need to to do, and then I just just start doing this one after the other. I just started connecting those people. I started finding out more about this, and so exercising that uh, uh, creative power of ours that I find is very important. And then you just you just follow those steps. You just follow your plan. And you know what? You might very well fail. It might not work out exactly how you expected it. But if you go through these steps. You will already have achieved, you will have already become successful 
because you will have gone way further ahead. You'll have become a bigger, better, better person yep. than you would be if you hadn't started that process. I tell people in my seminars, start a business, not just for the heck of it, really, but start a business because it's going to be the best personal development boot camp you'll ever, ever have. <laughs> you got that You will right. be forced to communicate better, learn more, listen better, uh, um, expand through your comfort zone, do things that are uncomfortable for you. And guess what? You will, by becoming a better, bigger person, by expanding your comfort zone, becoming a bigger person, uh, you will now be able to achieve things that you never thought were possible before, you know? And, um, and so I'm not sure if I'm answering your question quite in, in the no, way no. that you intended, but that, that, that was the process for me anyway. Uh, after sorting out your mindset. That's exactly what I was after. I mean, in, in at the, because <clears throat> when you get over to that last point, we're talking about, you said follow the plan. I mean, at some point you got to do something. You can't think forever. You got to actually yeah. get up and go talk to somebody, pick up a phone, develop a relationship, put a distribution model together, something. And then the only other thing that I, I want to make sure everyone understands is when I, when Mark is talking about, you know, you know, write down your ideas and you want to make a million dollars, understand that doesn't mean it has to be an exponentially quote unquote great over earth shattering idea for it to be a million dollars. And what I mean by that is uh, if you say to yourself, you know, hey, I want to deliver lemonade. Great. You can have a lemonade stand on the corner uh, and that's awesome. Uh, and that's going to generate what it generates, you know, especially, you know, say it's a quarter a cup or 50 cents or whatever it is. Uh, the the point is, is if you want that limp, you still want to deliver lemonade, but you want to make a million dollars. Now it's OK. Well, how can I have a lemonade stand on every corner in my city uh, at the same time? And then th you're still delivering lemonade. It's just now you're delivering lemonade at scale. So don't get when you're when you're writing down your ideas, don't think your ideas have to be so grand that suddenly you you quote unquote can't do something or, or there's you're not capable of coming up with these ideas. You the ideas, the gold is what he's really saying, in my opinion, is the gold is inside your mind already. You have great ideas. Absolutely. And and in fact I tell my clients to write down a hundred way brainstorm a hundred ways how you can make $5,000 a month or $10,000 a month, right? Because wh when I started out, I only knew three ways to make some money. Send out a CV, lie through your teeth during the uh, job interview, and, uh, and pray that you get the job, right? That was one way. Right. I knew, I knew that some people were buying and selling properties in, the, in London. I knew that. And I knew that uh, I knew Herbalife. People were making money from ah, Herbalife. Yes, that, yes. That's, that's all I knew about money. And all I knew about the internet was... Uh, I had a Hotmail email account. That was the extent of everything I knew. And I'm not exaggerating, right? And I had just a suitcase with my clothes and a pair of rollerblades. But um, uh, the point is this. I had very, very limited knowledge about business or, or making money. So this exercise of brainstorming 100 ways how to make 2,000 pounds a month, that took a lot of effort. And so what I did is I, I went online. I researched how are people making money online. Are people making money, rather? Uh, I research. Uh, I, I opened the yellow pages, and so how are people? What are people advertising? So how are they making money uh, with, with these ads? Uh, I looked at um, uh, magazines that were for business opportunities, for example, and, and I and I learned about more ways to make money this way. Got it. And eventually, I came up with a hundred ways how to make two thousand pounds a month. And what that exercise does is it blasts through the belief, the limiting belief that. I can't make money. I don't know how to make money. It's hard to make money. Out of the 200 plus limiting beliefs that people have about uh, money, negative beliefs about money, uh, most of them fall into two main categories. One is money is bad. Money is evil. People won't like me. My friends won't like me if, if, I, if I make more money. And or it's not religious, spiritual, etc. If I make more money. And, and the other category is I don't know how. I can't make money. It's hard to make money. Th those are the two main categories. It's hard to make money and it's a bad thing to make money. And so uh, that exercise blasts through dozens of limiting beliefs around I can't make money, it's hard to make money, because then once you've finished it, you have black on white on your, on your uh, notebook or uh, journal or piece of paper, so many ways of making money, you, you realize your brain goes, okay, I give up. It's easy <laughs> to make money. I get it. There's so much wealth. There's so much abundance, so much opportunity to make money. And I tell people, 
complete that, figure out what problems do people have, what do people buy, and what solutions are people looking for. Instead of asking yourself, how can I make money? Ask yourself a much better quality question, what do people want and what do people buy right now? And, and I think, and it really boils down to the idea that money is nothing but the measure of the value you create for other people. Or as Zig Ziglar puts it, uh, in life you can create anything, you, you can get anything you want as long as you figure out how to, how to give people what they want. Or yep. uh, Brian Tracy says, um, you get paid in direct proportion to the amount of value that you deliver, that you deliver according to the marketplace. Yep. Uh, anyway, and there's many, many more quotes to, to that effect. And, and I believe that you, Jay, yourself, you say that the same thing. It's about the value. You look at real estate, if I understand correctly, and maybe I'm paraphrasing right. here, but you look at real estate as, as how can I add value to the tenants? How can I add yep. value to this community? How can I add value to these investors? Yep. Yeah. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And for those of you who are listening, uh, Hotmail.com has is, is gone the way of a floppy <laughs> disk. And Yellow Pages is what we used to have before Yelp. So uh, just keep that in mind. <laughs> I'm in my mid-30s and you've just made me feel old for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just letting you know. all the, the Because see, there's someone going, well, I got to have Hotmail. I got to use Yellow Pages. They're like, where do you find Yellow Pages? I'm like, guys, these things don't, they're, they're gone. I'm sorry. No floppy disk, no Hotmail, no Yellow Pages. Uh, we have replacements for those these days. Um, it, it is what it is. I know. I know. It's funny how tech, how quickly technology changes but i think that's also the thing that preserves our opportunity because what you're saying and in, in, in essence is that there's there's opportunity and in information once you figure anything out to be you know whether it be how you could have an ebook on parenting you'd have an ebook on, on starting a business online an ebook on how to make lemonade and so long as these things continue to change and evolve and humans continue to change and evolve i think this opportunity exists for quite some time Absolutely. I mean, uh, every day, every week, there's new breakthroughs in technology. There's new, op new new opportunities that come up all the time. But there's massive amounts of opportunity in 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 old uh, opportunities. Let's say in old uh, um, ways of of adding value. The, the thing with the internet, people think that ah, oh, he's making money on the internet. No, or she's making money on the internet. No, the internet is just a medium to reach out to people. Right. I don't. I don't care if I'm reaching out to people with flyers, right. with uh, billboards, with uh, uh, radio jingles, with the, or with podcasts, YouTube, Facebook, uh, direct mail. I mentioned direct mail, uh, email marketing, blogs, etc. It's all the same thing. It's finding a group of people that have a problem, and then communicate, reaching out to them, communicating to them, saying, "Hey, I've got a great solution for you here," and so. That that mindset, even though yes, yellow pages and hotmail, etc., we, we can make fun of that. But <laughs> the the fact is, the fact remains that um, that nothing has changed in those principles of wealth creation. Find out what people need and and help them, serve them, deliver value to them. You know, investors want a better return on the money. Great, let's put in some work and and deliver that for them. Right. These people in this community, in this city, they need uh, some better housing. Great, let's deliver that. For them, these tenants need better, whatever heating, uh, right. insulation, whatever. Let's deliver that for them. Yep. Uh, no. Yeah, you just figured out my entire real estate strategy <laughs> right there. It, it, the, the secret oh. is out, it, and there you go. Now all you got to do is execute it. Mark will be coming out soon with his book, uh, How to Do Real Estate in 28 Days or Less. <laughs> I, I can see Fantastic. it now. I can see it now. So uh, for those that are listening and they're going, man, this was awesome. What would you recommend if they want more of you, more of your thought processes? Most importantly, is, is there a resource somewhere that they could get some training on uncovering and eliminating these limiting beliefs that you continue to bring up? Jay, I love helping people. I've got tons of free resources online. If you go to freedvd.tv, you can get a free DVD off me. You just need to pay a bit of shipping. That's freedvd.tv. Value is ninety-seven dollars, yada yada, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And also at mark-anastasi.com forward slash thank you, I give away a bunch of uh, free ebooks on there, uh, personal development ebooks and wealth creation ebooks on there at mark-anastasi.com forward slash thank you. That's T H A N K Y O U. 
thank you. And also at markanastasi.com forward slash 21 secrets. It's mark anastasicom forward slash 21 secrets. I give away a free ebook titled 21 Millionaire Secrets that will change your life. 21 Millionaire Secrets that will change your life uh, on that site. So those are a few resources that uh, that people can um, can download. Oh. And I just want to add one more thing. We're talking about adding value, and most people simply don't think like that, and that's why often they're broken, why their their life doesn't work. Most people go through life with a mindset of entitlement, mm. which is they they feel is just they're just entitled to be taken care of by the state, by their parent, by whoever. Uh, they they feel entitled to just get stuff. They want to take stuff. And, and so, and that's the reason why they don't really get ahead in life. So the mindset, if you adopt a mindset of how can I deliver value and help people, provide solutions for people, and, and then feel grateful for your life, that is the mindset of super successful, highly wealthy people. A, a, an attitude of gratitude and the mindset of how can I deliver more value. Nice. I, I think... If we keep going, we're going to end up with like 12 episodes and a seminar right here, right now, because I, you and I, we could talk about and deliver this for hours. And I, I, I know that I, I definitely appreciate the time that you've invested here with us today. I believe this episode is one that they're going to take. You guys go, go take notes and rewind it, listen to it again more and more. Mark, one last thing. If, if that person, Right now, let's say they're having their graveyard cemetery moment right now, and they're listening. What would you say to them? And you know what, Jay? I get that question in, in different variations every single day, especially since the book came out. People write to me all the time saying, Mark, I'm in an abusive relationship. I have no money. I can't get out. What should I do? Mark, my, my wife just left me. I have two small children. I'm $80,000 in debt. It's a, what do I do? Mark, uh, my wife has two jobs. I have two jobs. Like my hand, I can't use my hand anymore. We're going to lose the house. We're eighty thousand dollars in debt. What should I do? And the reality of the situation is this. And I and I hate to be so brutal about it, but your mindset about money and about yourself, maybe even self esteem issues, are the reason that you are in this situation. So what I recommend to and and you can change things very very rapidly. But it needs to start with a mindset change and then look for a strategy. Because everybody's looking for, Mark, how can I make money quick? Jay, how can I make money quick and easy? Mm -hmm. Right? First, work on your mind. Spend three days, even five days, uh, identifying your limiting beliefs about money. Write down the end of the sentences. Um, the worst thing about money is dot, dot, dot. Or I can't make it out of money because dot, dot, dot. Or I hate rich people because dot, dot, dot. And identify what, what did you hear about money when you were growing up? Exercise number two, write down 100 reasons why you must make $5,000 or $10,000 a month or $3,000 a month. Exercise number three, brainstorm 100 ways how you can make $3,000 or $5,000 $10,000 a month. But 100 ways how. Go all the way to 100 ways how. Go all the way to 100 reasons why. And do not stop until you get to, I mean, it, might, it might take you two or three days, but do not stop until you get absolutely to 100 reasons why. And 100 ways how. Don't stop at like 52 reasons and 12 ways how. Do go all the way. Then, out of the 100 ways how, you will find a brilliant idea to get you out of this situation. You know, start calling people up. Ask for some help. Figure out how you can implement this plan. And uh, normally, the rest should take care of it. So, oh, there's other things as well, but programming your mind for success. Do your affirmations. Use subliminal software to program yourself on, on your computer screen. Um, do visualization exercises as well. But basically, instead of focusing on uh, you being a victim and all the bad things that have happened in life, focus on, you know, write down the 20 things that you're grateful for, the 20 things that you love about yourself, the new person that you want to become, the who I am exercise, right? Write down your affirmations, etc. These are the things that actually change your life. Yeah. Because here's what I see. People are in a difficult situation and then they go, okay, I, I've got to qu make, quickly make some money. I'll go and buy some real estate or I'll go and uh, do uh, some multi-level marketing thing or I'll go and start an internet business or a blog or sell on eBay, etc. And you know what? Three months later, six months later, a year, two years later, they're in exactly the same situation they were before and even in a worse situation because they didn't actually deal with 
what's happening in their subconscious mind. So, Jay, that is my recommendation to people in those cemetery moments and those times where they're, they're close to committing suicide or what have you. And God knows there's 350 million people suffering from depression around the world right now. My advice is this. Actually look deep down in your subconscious mind. Do these exercises. Dredge up all this negative stuff in order for you to eliminate each and every one of those things. The answers are in these free ebooks that I'm giving away. Please, please uh, read this ebook, The 21 Millionaire Secrets That Will Change Your Life. And uh, so that, that's my advice in a nutshell. Awesome. Thank you for being here, sir. Thank you, Jim. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what it is? It is that time. It's that time where you get to prove that you are ready to move at the meet speed of instruction. You've been given a number of resources. And let, let me remind you that they're, they're free. They cost you no money. They cost you time. Are you ready? Are you really ready and willing to face what it is that you know has been holding you back? And I'm saying to you that Mark is here to offer it to you. And he's given you many places to go. Free DVDs. Dot TV. That's kind of cool. Uh, I bet you there's some more information there that will have some more actions that you can go take and make things happen. Remember, asking those better questions will get you better answers. I look forward to talking to all you guys soon. Until next time. 